so, uh, so, um, so when the, the consequences you follow this uh, postulates disagree with your intuition, I just want you to be aware that none of us here, except for two people, have correct intu intuition about special relativity right now. It, no one is born with the correct intuition for special relativity. You have to develop it through practice with the math. So um, let me give you this a thought experiment, which will uh, challenge something that everyone assumes. So it's such an, I don't know, intuitive thing to assume that often people don't even state this as an assumption explicitly, because you are implicitly assuming it. Um, you are implicitly assuming it without, without you know, pointing it out as an assumption. So let me draw this picture of a light beam being emitted from a single source going towards two different points. So in, this is the setup for the thought experiment. You have a train, and I'm going to set up the uh, these following arrangements rather specially. So the train has a length L. Let me call the front of the train point A, back of the train point B. And halfway between the, um, halfway between the two points, so that would be a distance um, L over two from either end, you have a light source that's going to um, blip at time equals zero. So the light goes in both the directions. Um, how long does it take for the light to arrive at this point? So you record the light arriving here, call that TA. What is the expression for this time? Yeah, distance divided by speed, right? L over two divided by C or L over two C. Same time here? Okay, so the, the reason I'm doing this elaborate setup for this is, or careful setup for this, is to say, well, I have two events happening simultaneously, meaning at the same time. And this is what we, implicitly assume because it's so intuitive. When two things happen at the same time, um, we tend to assume absolute simultaneity. That if two things happen at the same time, as in if I drop these two balls, and if they, and if they drop at the same time, then it's the same time. I don't have to qualify it in any way. It happens at the same time for everyone else who does it. And I want to draw you a picture here where I have one, so I have two observers. So I have observer A. Oh wait, that's gonna get confusing. Observer C, um, who is riding with a train. And for observer C, these two events happen simultaneously. Good? And I have observer D, who's sitting here. And let's see, um, let's see if these two events happen simultaneously for observer D. So, oh, well, I have to set this up. The train is moving at some speed. So let's say train is moving at some speed. Let's say half the speed of light, just to make it, you know, easier to draw. <laughs> So train is moving at half the speed of light. Um, so from this perspective, the light that's going back the other way, uh, so I guess this is uh, probably the easiest way to draw it. So let me draw the wave front for light. And these wave fronts, I can use them to uh, mark when particular events happen. Is it going to take all these wave fronts for the light to hit this point? B? What, so this is the aspect of the thought experiment. You sort of, uh, using your mental 
I don't know, imagination, um, you sort of follow through what happens. So the light goes beep here, and the waves start to travel in all directions. What else happens as that's going on? Anything else in the picture changes, moves? Train's moving. Train's moving, right? So this back of the train is moving forward as that's going on. So as this light travels backward, the back of the train moves up, probably ends up somewhere here or uh, somewhere here or something. So back of the train ends up somewhere here. And this is where this event happens as D is look, observing it. So um, all right. Um, now, by the time the light wave that's going forward reaches here, will it have hit this point A? No, this point would have moved forward, right? So actually, light has to continue traveling for a little bit more to finally catch up to the front of the train and hit it here. So this is the um, event A, or I guess let me call it A prime and call this uh, B prime. Do these two events happen at the same time? You can see that here, the light had to travel longer distance. Here, uh, light had to travel shorter distance. Now, if you're dealing with um, regular relativity that you're familiar, let's imagine this is a sound source of sound wave. Then what you would say is uh, they happen at the same time because the sound waves travel at different speed in different directions. The one that's moving this way moves faster. The one that's moving this way moves slower. So they end up happening at the same time. We, this, that's why we started out with the postulates of special relativity. Even though this is not how we intuitively think, I'm asking you to believe this to be absolutely true all the time. Speed of light is constant. So even when the source is moving, the speed of light moving backward and speed of light moving forward will be moving at the same speed. So that means if this distance is shorter, let me call this time, I don't know, T B prime, and this distance is longer, T A prime, then this T um, this happens before that happens. So the time at which from this point of view, time at which light hits this point, T B prime, is less than time at which light hits the front of the train. So um, I guess we summarize this as a relativity of simultaneity, relativity of simultaneity. Whether two events are simultaneous depends on what ref inertial reference frame the, that the observer is in. And um, it's actually going to take longer than the 10 minutes we spent to actually get this. Um, but, um, but I want you to point this out as uh, one of the most, uh, this is actually what Newton would have gotten wrong in his one of the like a Principia Mathematica or something. He said something about absolute time, whatever. None of that's right. <laughs> so, so time is relative. So when we, how we can say that two things happen at the same time. So for me, they actually do happen at the same time. But for someone who's moving relative to me, these two things, um, so I, I need to figure this out. If someone's moving that way, I think this drops faster and then this drops. Um, so, so, um, so th th this will be the, so uh, let me just jump forward a little bit. I mentioned this in the next couple minutes. Um, there are things, so-called paradoxes in special relativity. And let me come out to you and say right now, there are no paradoxes in special relativity. Everything in special relativity can be uh, understood perfectly. This is in contrast to quantum mechanics where there are genuine questions that people don't know real answers to. In special relativity, you can figure it out. But the thing that makes things look paradoxical are the assumptions that you just intuitively make without realizing it. And this is one of the biggest sources of that uh, 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 misassumption. 
about, uh, I think one of the authors, textbook authors I like say, about the 80 to 90 percent of the misunderstanding about special relativity can be traced to this. So, um, so it's going to be easier to address this once we cover the topics on Thursday, Lorentz transformation. So we'll get to this, return to this later this week. Uh, but for rest of today, I want to just to go through some similar thought experiments with more detail to um, show two effects, two special relativistic effects called the time dilation and length contraction.